Okay, well, thank you very much, Dieti and Sarah, for joining us today. The uh, discussion there clearly is around digital and e-commerce and scale. Uh, and now we're going to quickly shift to another business problem uh, and business opportunity uh, for a, a company that is joining us here, which is ProxyBid. Um, now, ProxyBid is recognized as the leader in live auctions, and uh, they actually are so well recognized in that leadership side that uh, they've just entered a very strategic partnership with eBay. Um, and what they needed to do was solve the challenge of auction uptime, reliability, and stability, and they did that through our IT solutions uh, managed cloud side. So this is really about, you know, in this case, how Rackspace can help uh, IT solve some of the business challenges and really focus more on the business side of the discussion. So uh, let me start again with the video because it always helps just to understand a little bit more about the customer. So here's a little bit more on ProxyBid. ProxyBid is the world's most trusted marketplace for live online auctions. We deal with many categories from collectors' cars to agriculture, collectibles, heavy construction, bulldozers, earth movers, backhoes. We also get into commercial and industrial situations where we're helping liquidate a building or a manufacturing facility somewhere. We're able to support that for uh, over 3,000 sellers across the country. So ProxyBid started in 2001. They were looking at themselves as a marketing arm for traditional auction companies around the world. And with that, they, they didn't put a whole lot of attention towards the technology that was behind it as they weren't really thinking about it as being a technology company. The growth was ramping up. We just needed to find a new solution that we could outsource the right amount of technology support and to stabilize the platform so that we can handle the growth. We found out about Rackspace and as we dug in, we learned that there is so much more going on about Rackspace than we'd ever heard. We began to use Rackspace Managed Cloud. We were able to free up our resources on our own team to be able to focus on the areas of, of specialty that we have within ProxyBid. We don't have to worry about racking the servers or taking care of that production network. We can depend on that Rackspace partner, that Rackspace team that's a truly extension of our group. ProxyBit is looking forward to the future because some of the recent partnerships we pulled together in the marketplace. We will be the exclusive partner for online live events for eBay. We also look forward to this future because we know that Rackspace is going to be there and help us grow and they're going to grow with us. All right, so from ProxyBid, please help me welcome Chance Irvin. Welcome to Rackspace Solve and welcome to ProxyBid. A little story about our journey uh, the past few years. Um, we're going to talk about the ProxyBid marketplace and what that really means to us and then talk about the journey that we've had with Rackspace uh, since 2011, uh, doing some team rebuilding. Uh, how we got into the managed cloud with this new partner, some eye-opening things that happened, and then the great things uh, that have come from that, and then just kind of wrap up on how truly a fanatical partnership it has been. So ProxyBid's most, the, the world's most trusted online marketplace for buying and selling highly valued items. So, you know, what does that really mean? Well, the auction marketplace, traditionally, it's, it's really the oldest marketplace in the world. Auctions uh, is how things have been sold for thousands of years. Well, within that, there are folks that are uh, resistant to technology. Uh, there are folks that have embraced it very well. So, uh, but within that, there was an element of trust that we had to build to make sure we knew who those sellers are and are they reputable and do they have the integrity to represent their items properly. This is what it is. If there's something broke on it, do they say that, those sorts of things. And then who are the buyers? Uh, on some of our high-valued stuff, uh, heavy construction, bulldozers, things that cost three-quarter of a million or even a million dollars sometimes, we want to know that buyer is a legitimate buyer, not waste the time of folks that are, that are buying those sorts of things. So first through the application real quick. On the left, we see the, the bidding application, uh, the item that's up for bid right now, and then the catalog right next to it, and the bid button on the lower left. And then uh, on the right, we can do things where you can put in like a, a max bid and set it and forget it, come back, and if you win, you win, if you don't, you don't. Uh, 
we have those uh, opportunities in there. We have nearly 7,000 live auctions ran on a platform last year. Um, we are certainly well beyond that for this year. I don't know the exact number at this point, but uh, every month so far, our, our growth in uh, opportunities uh, has been uh, close to 20% or more uh, so far this uh, year month to month. Uh, full audio and video capabilities, we stream out the event so folks that can't make it there, they can actually see it and watch it from wherever they are. That's really the, one of the key things going on for our marketplace from a functionality perspective. Um, uh, so there we go. And then uh, beyond the live auction, we also have advertising, private party sales, and timed auctions. All of those uh, avenues are still on the same platform, runs from the same place. It's just different features within the application. Um, right now, we're enjoying about 3.2 million visits a month. Um, uh, some of the private party uh, sales, it's basically an instant purchase scenario similar to an eBay transaction. It's less of an event and it's just here's this item. And then uh, the timed auctions are certainly uh, similar to eBay, um, but it's a whole bunch of items in one event. You go to the website, you'll get into that event and you can bid on many items uh, and you're kind of chasing the clock down, so to speak. Um, and then direct purchase, there are some situations, I don't have that listed here, but we have some direct purchase opportunities where we have some financing partners and we can, you know, maybe you have a school system that you're selling all the desks and replacing. Well, we'll just buy that out of there and get it sold for you separate. So a, a direct transaction. So trusted, uh, talking about that for a second. Uh, we have a very sophisticated, secure risk management capabilities. Uh, and from those tools, we're able to uh, take care of some dispute resolution Sometimes, like I was saying earlier, uh, a seller may misrepresent what they are selling. The buyer receives it, they're not happy. They just spent any amount of money on something and it wasn't what they bought. If they let us know, we'll help facilitate uh, remediation for that situation. Now, if whichever side's being unreasonable, we're gonna try to help them understand, you know, that's, that's not, not really where you need to go with it, that sort of thing. Another piece of it is fraud detection. Um, the most common thing in the auction marketplace is shill bidding, which is the seller bidding on his own stuff, trying to drive up the buyer's piece. It's not illegal, but it's quite unethical. It's just not really a good thing to do. Since it's not illegal, we can't really prevent it, but as, a, uh, as the marketplace, we can force you to advertise that on your, on your event. If you're gonna do that, if you've told the parties that you're gonna do it, we let you do it. If you don't say you're gonna do it and you, we find out you're doing it, we'll kick you out of the marketplace. So uh, that's an example of some things going on there. Our key tool is MarketGuard. Uh, MarketGuard is a proprietary bank quality risk mitigation tool. We are uh, checking the buyers. Who are you, where are you from? Do you have the money you need to, to participate in this event? If it's a very high valued event, super high valued event, we can turn the knobs up and do further checks on the folks if we need to. That's all driven by the seller's choice. If the seller wants a higher level, we can turn that up and do a, a higher look at that. We're doing OFAC checks. Uh, we're looking at non-pay rates for anything on your uh, uh, credit report, those sorts of things. And we compile dozens and dozens of uh, points just so we know what kind of a risk factor that person is. Um, and all of those things build into just trust in the marketplace. The buyer knows that we're holding the seller accountable and the seller knows that we're, we're looking at uh, the potential buyer so that they don't waste their time when the event comes around. So reliability, uh, part of building trust, if you're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna utilize a system, well, a lot of times you're gonna hurry. In our case, our things are on a calendar. These things are gonna start at this time. Well, if they go there at that time and it's not there because they were down, that's really bad. Um, in our environment, especially on the live side, uh, a live auction moves. This could be a, li a live auction in here. I'm the auctioneer doing my thing. We have proxy bids set up and they're streaming things out. Well, if we're going along, go one, go two, go three, go four, and the online part goes down, we don't stop. So if that happens, that online piece total loss of opportunity. They might be selling a three quarter million dollar item 
and we had zero potential of, of picking that up. So reliability is, uh, uptime is huge there. And the other piece that's used is low latency, that transaction coming in from online, we isolate that transaction. We got to make sure that shows up to the database instantly. It has to be sub-second, very sub-second, because this guy on stage, so to speak, he's going at a pace, and he's not going, oh, I think one's coming from the, no, he's looking for hands going up, right? So again, all of that builds on, whoops, wrong button, sorry. All of that builds up, uh, as long as we're up, as long as we can get that transaction across, uh, we're gonna keep building trust with the parties involved. So back in the early 2011, uh, I inherited a team, there was two people on it. They had a couple of years of experience between the two of them in IT. Um, they were very young, early 20s, and they'd been running this platform for two and a half years. So pretty much right out of, they're not even done with school, they put them to work, they're managing the platform. Very impressed with a lot of stuff they did. Very smart folks. But we just really weren't, at the time, focused on doing with the technology what needed to happen. And uh, the infrastructure was some in-house work, some colo, uh, and dabbling in some cloud at the time. But there was basically no change management. Change management's huge. First time I walk in, they're like, hey, we're gonna, we have this problem, we're putting this software out today, and we gotta, we gotta get this out by three o'clock. Like, oh, okay, well, how long have we been working on this? Well, it came up at eight o'clock this morning. So what? So, <laughs> I mean, it, that was my first day on the, in the place, and uh, that's how they were rolling out code, things that they came up with that morning. Really not, not going well. And the reliability and stability was low. We were losing customers, lost a bunch of big customers in 2010. Got to the end of the year. They let me start rebuilding the team. Uh, by that point, I had five, five people on the squad uh, with uh, about 13 years experience average. And we got this new partner. We went live in October. They were talking about this fanatical support thing. Okay, they, kind of, they, they evidently sold us on it, but there was a lot of questions around the company. What does that really mean? What is that? Uh, you know, people looking at me a little bit cross-eyed. Some of my peers in Omaha are like, I thought they were just these folks like Amazon, but not quite, right? So anyway, right out of the gate though, we're with uh, the managed cloud, and we put a strong management, uh, change management process in place. And immediately, we were more stable. Our trust remained low because it was just then, right? We just came out of a couple of years where things are down too much, customers are leaving. So, but we stopped losing customers at that point and some, th some things were stable. So now I'm gonna uh, kind of tell the story of where we've been since then. So this is our reference architecture right now. Um, I can tell you with my six folks, managing that if we brought it in-house, not, not possible with what we're doing on a 24-7, 365 basis, we'd have to hire 20 some plus people. So in our scenario, I've got six folks managing all this because we've got this fanatical team uh, in uh, San Antonio and around the world supporting us uh, to manage this thing. So uh, right out of the gate, October 2011, we went up in two sites, Dallas and Chicago, and uh, they wanted redundancy, we're making a change, two of everything, we want failover. What we really wanted was to be able to run uh, simultaneously load balance between two places. Utilize systems in both, if one went down, seamless, right? Everybody wants that. Our code architecture doesn't really allow us to do load balance. There's some redo in the software, there's some really old stuff out there we're constantly working on getting out of it, out of the platform. Still gonna be a couple of years on that, we're, we're well on our way. But in this story, uh, we've gone along and about 14 months down the road, we made a decision to go just to Dallas. And the reason that occurred, talking with uh, the, our president stopped me in the hallway one day, says, Chance, how's that Chicago site doing? Great, how, long, how many times have we used it? Two times. Well, why do we have to use it two times? Got to test it, got to make sure it works. <laughs> okay, you mean, you mean we haven't had to use it in two years? Nope, just to test. I was like, okay, shut her down. Too much insurance for, right, for us right now. We can use that, those dollars for other capital endeavors. Yes, boss, no problem. But I got to go do some things in Dallas. If we're going to shut that down, I'll save you the money there, but I'm going to spend some of it again in Dallas because there's some other things I need to do if I don't have that failover. Okay, no problem. 
this was really the, the eye-opening piece with the Rackspace side was, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, we have, we've only been in this, con we have a three-year contract, we've only been in it for a little over a year, we want to shut down half of what we agreed to. Wasn't really looking forward to having that conversation. Talked to the Rackspace folks from the get-go. Great, how'd your business change? How'd we come to that decision? Okay, got it, what do we need to do? What do you need, what do you want? No fighting it, just how do we got, what do we gotta do to support your business? There was no question about it. Um, that was the first real opportunity where we really got to see what is this fanatical support thing. They really mean to be an integral part of how your business is going. But there's also some pains along the way. Nothing is perfect. It hasn't been perfect with, with Rackspace. There's been a few bumps and bruises along the way, a misconfiguration of something. Most of the time, we find it early in the process before we go live, which that's good. Sometimes your, your architecture is looked at as an example and some folks examine some things on your systems and maybe they forget where they are. Oops, they rebooted mine, not the one they were trying to work on. But in those situations, what happened is what the big deal is. And what happened was there's instant transparency from the, from the account team. I don't have to pull teeth when something goes wrong. And before I ask, they're already telling me, okay, here's what happened, here's why it happened, and here's how we're going to prevent it. Oh, and this looks like these other 12 things in your environment, very similar, so we're going to remedy those as well, so that, whatever it is, can't happen in those areas either. And the other side of this is sometimes there's things that are missed because it's really my platform. They're just managing it for me. It's my piece of business. It's my code. It's my database. And if I don't tell them, how are they supposed to know they're supposed to alert on it or something like that, right? So we're constantly learning, but that integration of the team and support uh, extension of the team is, is just sig very significant. Through that time, we brought on cloud sites, so IDS IPS services, web application firewall, and just recently hosted Exchange. So we're using other, other tools. So another quick story about how this managed service and this fanatical support goes. Uh, Lambert Auto Auction in September of 2013, uh, for a few decades, Mr. Lambert was the largest Chevy dealership in the nation. It was like mid 60s uh, or mid 50s through early 70s. He's one of the biggest guys out there in, in, in uh, Chevrolet. Well, Mr. Lambert is like 98 years old in 2013, and his family, like, okay, we've got to take care of uh, mom and dad. Well, the thing about Mr. Lambert is he never sold a used car to anyone. A trade-in, put it in the shed. Okay? Imagine that for like four decades. Okay? The other thing, though, is in his, in his definition of a used car, that included the current year model. As soon as they started bringing the next year model, okay, everything current year, now that the other stuff's coming, those are used too. So he put those in the shed or in a fence line where trees grow through. So very interesting situation. So we have this event that's coming up in September. We learn about two months ahead, maybe two and a half months ahead that this is happening. So from a technology perspective, this is kind of a neat deal. This is gonna be neat to be a part of. He's got a, near 500 cars. There's like 480 cars to sell. About 40 of them are brand new. Four to 17 miles on about 50 of the cars. And they're 40 years old or 50 years old, okay? This is where we had to figure out how to bring enterprise technology, <laughs> okay? That is, that is a soybean field carved out next to a golf course. All the cars are lined out there. We are about eight miles north of nowhere, central northwest Nebraska. It's Pierce, Nebraska. There's a population about 400 or something like that. And we have, in, in Pierce, it's about another 15 miles to anywhere there where there's any real utilities that we can, we can bring in. We've got our remote equipment. We've got to be on the internet live. They're expecting 15 to 20,000 people going to be here. There's rumors that Jay Leno's involved and he wants some of these cars and that's big hoopla. The history channel's on their way. They're bringing the fast and loud crew to do some filming. That's what we're told. The Jay Leno part is the only part that wasn't right. History channel was there. All these people come in Verizon, found out all this was gonna happen, so they rolled in their truck with their big satellite feed, which is, was great. We ordered some uh, DSL lines. Of course, the, the providers are in there. Nobody wanted to be the reason it failed. They dropped fiber in the middle of that field for us on their own. 
No one wanted to be responsible for failure here, right? So we're about, we're about five weeks out now, and Burn Notice happened. Burn Notice was a TV show on USA Network, and they were, it was a, an auction event that we were selling off all their production studios. Well, what do we mean by Burn Notice happened? That red line represents some Hollywood folk that put something on Facebook, and for the next three minutes, their three or eight or 12 million followers all jumped on proxy bid, which is great, but not the traffic pattern we were usually used to, okay? <laughs> not really complaining, but so we sat down, we said, well, what's Lambrick supposed to look like? And we talked about what represented this spike, figured out, oh, we think it's going to be about eight times more than this. Okay. 20 minutes later, I'm talking to my Rackspace team. I need to upgrade every item on my platform. It needs to be live and going in five weeks. Go. Okay, five weeks really isn't that long to touch the entire platform, keep everything up. We have probably, I don't know, five or 600 auctions in that five week time period. We still got to stay up, right? We did it, pulled it off. They delivered with about 10 days to spare, I think, somewhere in there. Not a problem. I think the first server we got had one little configuration problem, but we're still way in testing. Fixed that one thing quick, and everything else came out exactly the way it needed to be. It was great. The middle one is the first day of Lambert, and the second was the second day of Lambert. The traffic was t twice our normal, that blue line. Very big deal that we got that upgrade done. We would have failed. That leads into it's it's time to renew. We've got to uh, we've got to make a decision. Do we stay with these folks? It had been a great three years. We went through a, a, a rapid RFP process, and after the fact, I've shared it was really just to find out is there anybody out there really doing fanatical support? Because I had tons of questions I didn't have the first time when we did pick Rackspace. We figured it out. My BDC, she might be here in the room somewhere, picking on her a little bit from back then. There she is. So. This is something about how the team engagement can be, though. Because what I'm about to tell you, you would not do this if you didn't have good relationships with your folks. Great interaction extension of your team. We called her the morning. She knew we were going to call her and tell her that she won the business or she lost the business. I'm Henri. I had my lead engineer call her, and he's all somber and telling her how she lost the business, and they made us go with someone here, and the, the leadership got involved while I'm typing up a congratulations letter. <laughs> and I'm listening in on the conference call, and all of a sudden you hear, boom her head hitting the, the desk or something like that, right? And Adam, my lead engineer, he's like, I am, and he's like, you're mean, dude. Anyway, <laughs> he's carrying it on. He says, well, Chance is going to send you something tell it that explains it all. So I hit send on the email. Okay, there it is. Courtney, I, you guys are awesome. <laughs> you know, she, she wanted to kill us. But it was good, right? That's the kind of relationship you can have with the folks, with your, with your client teams. They're truly engaged. You get to know each other. You're dealing with them, and they're dealing with you, and you're, and you're moving forward. It's really great. Through those successes, we've been able to extend to some business in Australia, uh, Great Britain specifically, and a, little, a few other European areas. Um, Kino Brothers is a, is a recent uh, new partnership. They do a lot with classic cars and fine art and things like that. You might see these guys as analysts on the Antique Roadshow. Um, and then that led into an opportunity with eBay. This is a big deal. They have a lot of people on their site. They have a lot of traffic, but they don't sell a lot of high-end stuff. They don't sell combines and bulldozers and oil refineries. We do. <laughs> they would love to sell those things. So there's a partnership going on there. It'll be late this year, probably early next year before you see the fruits of that. There's a lot of work to get done to get the live auction stuff in the eBay environment properly. It's a very exciting piece going forward. So know what you're trying to solve. Be realistic about what is perfect. Perfect isn't it never breaks. It's how do you deal with it when something comes around. Uh, use partners who are going to grow with you, expand with you, change with you in a forward-looking how do we get there standpoint, not trying to corner you into where, where you started. And then you're going to, if you do that, you're going to enjoy the rewards of uh, new business, new opportunities, gaining back new customers. It's been a true extension of our team. They are truly fanatical. That's our story about it, and they are number one in our marketplace. Thank you.